Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Cocktail Mechanics. I'm Cressy, your f***ing rad host, and today we're going to be talking about the art of sabre. I have a massive sword. What is sabre? Sabre is the art of cutting off the top of a bottle of champagne with a sword. So where did this come about? This originated in, well, actually when the French, the French military uh, that was governed under Napoleon. So instead of like fiddling with a f***ing cork and stuff to get champagne open, they just got their sabres and they just pew, lopped it off with a sword. Quick, easy, effective, also incredibly stylish. And we still do that to this day. So there are some places in the world you can go to to get a bottle of champagne open with a massive sword. Or if you're like me, you can just do it here. So when you saber things, there are many ways you can do it. So like right here, we've got like a little tonic bottle. So I'm gonna show you like a mini saber that you can do behind a bar um, when you're all on your own, there are no customers in the building because you're probably gonna get someone's eye out, let's be honest. But some people like to saber tonic bottles. I've got a bottle of ginger ale here. Fever tree. So the thing is, when something's carbonated, there's a buildup of CO2 and pressure. So basically, this is like, it's like a very small bomb about to go off. So what you want to do is you want to find the seam where the bottle is sort of stuck together. You want to guide your sword, bar blade, bayonet, whatever, along the line. And then you want to just, you want to follow through. So the whole point is you don't stop when you get here you want to go all the way through. So we do it with this. We could, I'll do it with a bar blade just to show you, then we'll do something like a bigger bowl. So I must stress this. You need to be careful. Actually, don't even try this unless you know what you're talking about. Don't try it because the worst thing that can happen is you get covered in shit and you just have a handful of glass. So you're going to guide it, figure out your mind, and you want to do it at an angle, okay? And it's just blunt force. So one, two, three. Just like that. And a good important thing to do is just to check that there are no extra shards. So what happens is because you are applying so much force, any shards, if there are any, will fly out, but usually it's just a clean cut. Um, I don't know where that went. <laughs> Did we find it? You can see that the lid's intact and so is the glass. It's very, very sharp. Um, so be careful, especially when you're pouring this and having it around people. If you're gonna pour it, pour it out and then keep it away from anyone else who could be drinking. And if you have been drinking, do not do this because it is dangerous as Anyway, sabering is a fantastic art, but it is done with champagne. So without further ado, let's do this with some champagne. So what I've got today is a bottle of Moet, just your classic Brut Moet that everyone has. So Moet came out in 1869. 69. It's almost 200 years old, but not quite. We've got another 49 years before it's 200 years old. So it's a, it's a oh, actually Moet is 150 years old this year, which is pretty cool. So. What? But anyway, there was like a massive thing. When you're sabering with champagne, you need to make sure that your champagne bottle is cold. We have had this in the freezer for a good 40 minutes. Do not leave champagne in the freezer. It will either explode or turn into slushy. But if, like, if you want to risk that, you risk that. But it's been chilled for a good couple of days in the fridge and then put in the freezer. What some people like to do is they'll take the bottle and they'll turn it upside down and leave it in ice for about 10 minutes so it's nice and cold. So this is pretty much a bomb waiting to go off. As you know, that champagne have those cages over their corks to make sure it stays there and stays in place. And people, you know, and there's loads of stories of people just like getting people's eye out with champagne corks. I like to fire champagne corks at people. I think it's a lot of fun, but um, I'm not the most mature person in the world. So without further ado, shall we try and savor a real bottle of champagne? So as you can see, I've taken off the, um, the label well, not the actual label, but I've taken off the stuff around the bottle. I need to also take this bit off because I need a clear path on the seam. So, so you need to be able to get from one part of the seam all the way to the top of the bottle without being obstructed. And you'd think it would be quite a small obstruction, but it's not. It's actually not that small because any difference in, um, in smoothness can be a problem. So you just want it to be a nice, clean route to the neck, which we've got here. What we're going to do is we're going to take the cage off. When you're taking the cage off, make sure you have got your finger on top in case like, you know, you f the bottle up and it explodes. So we'll just take the cage off. That always needs to be off when you're doing stuff like this, but just be wary of it. Some people like to use a saver. This is a Scottish Claymore, but the thing about this is it's a bit heavy and I need to be able to get enough force behind it. So I'm gonna be using a machete. So with these things, you can either use the sharp part or the back, it doesn't matter. I prefer to go with the back because it's a little bit more force, okay? What we are going to do is we will take, so you want the blade in your dominant hand and you want the bottom in your less, less dominant hand. And you're gonna put 
your finger in the bottom of the champagne bottle so you have a nice grip of it. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that you have a nice flow. So just do that a couple of times. Have the blade at an angle before you follow through. So get ready, one, two, three, and you're gonna go all the way through. So make sure when you do it, you're committing to it. Commit to it. Oh. Like so. And that is how you sabre a bottle of champagne. As you can see, we have a really nice clean cut. It's delicious, but when you pour, just uh, be careful. Make sure you check that you've got it nice and clean. There's no shards around the rim. There's no shards. Pour that in. Oh, lovely. No shards, nothing. Mm. I wish every episode was like this. So as you can see, it's come clean off. Look at that, cork's still intact. So is the ring. And like, uh, you know, you can even, well, you can't really put it back on because the cork is expanded. But check it out. This is basically a bomb of fizzy goodness. So there you go. I hope you have enjoyed, <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed today's episode on how to savor a bottle of champagne. You can do it like Napoleon's army did, or you can do it like we did with a massive f machete. And if you're really feeling it a bit, not so classy, you can do it with a bar blade. Anything that's blunt and that you can save it with. Thanks guys. Any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. New videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. See you soon.